Good evening and welcome to the Good Friday service here. Tonight is a special service. It's going to be a surrendering service. So we will be having some nails over here and some papers and pens. And then we can write down what we want to give up to God. And then we will nail them to the cross. And then after the service is over, we'll pull the nails out. We'll take the papers and the papers will be burned. And you take the nail as a memento, as a reminder of what you gave up to God tonight. As it's a tenebrae service, a tenebrae service is um, kind of a quieter, solemn service. We're going to have a few songs in here, some music. Um, we will have the candles that are going over here, and as we go through each station in the tenebrae, uh, candle will be snuffed out until we get to the Christ candle in the middle, and that will be snuffed out last. So let's go to God in prayer and open the service. Almighty God, as we hear your word tonight, look with mercy on us, your family, for which the Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners, to suffer death on the cross, but who is alive and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. As we're in the midst of Holy Week, it's, it's our most important week of the Christian calendar. And let's remember uh, what has led us to today, as this is the Holy Week. During Holy Week, we observed the end of the Lenten season that this year started on March 2nd. This year, it's a time of reflection of all God has done for us by going to the cross to bear our sins and the sins of the world. Holy Week started with Holy Wednesday. Holy Wednesday commemorates the bargain of Judas by a clandestine, clandestine spy among his disciples. Last night, known as Maundy Thursday, is a Christian holy day that commemorates events such as the washing of the feet and the Last Supper. Maundy, in the Christian Dictionary, translates directly into the washing of the feet. Tonight we observe Good Friday, commemorating Christ's death on the cross at Calvary. Tomorrow is known as Holy Saturday. It's a Christian religious observance that ends Lenten season, falling on the day before Easter Sunday. The, the observance commemorates the final day of Christ's death which is traditionally associated with the, his triumphant descent into hell. This can be a confusing statement today, and it has its roots based on the Apostles' Creed. But suffice to say, whether his descending into hell was literal to save those that had already deceased, that were already deceased, or just a foreshadowing of his death losing its sting, for believers for eternity, we do find great hope. And that hope will be ours on Easter Sunday. During the Last Supper, Jesus washed the feet of his 12 disciples as they shared their final meal, an act of hospitality and humility. So let's begin tonight with an act of quiet humility by humbly receiving the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the cup in remembrance of these mighty acts. The disciples were all of the Jewish tradition. And so preparing for the Seder mill was something that they learned from childhood. And in the Jewish tradition, it was so important that every child knew that Seder meal backwards and forwards. And so many times we say when we begin communion that tonight something would change, but a lot of things changed. Uh, first of all, during a normal Seder meal there were several cups. Um, Jesus didn't wash feet during a traditional Seder meal, so it changed dramatically. But the 
the thing for us today is that says when Jesus broke the bread. This is my body broken for you. Like manners, he took the cup and he blessed it. This is my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. The body of Christ broken for blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. So the cross is set and the nails are ready. What we'd like you to do tonight is we'll be passing around paper and some pens here and some nails. And so I'd like you to think about what you need to give up to God. What you don't want to have a part of in your life anymore that, that Christ can remove from you. And we want it to mean something. So uh, it's not like giving up chocolate or something like that for Lent. What you want to do is this is serious and we want to give this over to God. And once we give it to God, it's done. That's one of the nice things about a surrendering service is it gives you that opportunity to physically manifest handing it over to God and being done with that in your life. And if you're truly, truly uh, serious about handing it over to God, then you will release it. And you will rely on God to help you release that and you won't have it a part of your life any longer. So as we surrender tonight, I want you to think about that. Think about what you'd like to surrender. Think about the seriousness of the, na of the nature of doing it. So write them down. Write those things that you wish to surrender to God tonight. Write them down, and then we will nail them to the cross. After the service, we'll dispose of the papers, and then you need to keep that nail with you as a reminder of turning that over to God. So as we go through this tonight, I'm going to give you a short message. I, I promised the guys that I'd keep it down to <laughs> at least six hours. So um, this message tonight, I want you to think about, so as you're thinking about releasing these things to God tonight, uh, think about this. And, and this message starts in Isaiah 53.5. And it says, But he was pierced, through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and he was scourged, and through his scourging we are healed. And in 1 Peter 2, 24, he says, And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you were healed. When we look at this passage in Isaiah, it describes what's going on, what's going to happen to Jesus, and, and what's going to be happening this holy week, 2,000 years ago. But see, Isaiah wrote that 740 years before Jesus was born. God gave him that message. So it gave the people a long time to think about what was going to happen. He describes the suffering of the Messiah, and then he writes his reasons for his suffering. He was pierced for our transgressions because of our rebellion against him. He was crushed for our iniquities, the depravity of, of man himself, and man's inhumanity to man, to other people. And he goes on to say, by his stripes we are healed. And understand, this is a spiritual healing. Not a physical healing that he's talking about here. It's our relationship with God. See, that was broken. That relationship was broken. But it is now healed by the blood of Christ. By that atonement that Jesus did for us on the cross.
by the beating and the scourging, by his blood being poured out for us, that was restored. So by his stripes, we are healed. That relationship with God is healed. The prophet Isaiah was pointing out that our sins required atonement. Our sins required for forgiveness. Our sins needed to be washed off of each and every one of us. But the traditional way of God's people being atoned for skin, sins in the Old Testament was through the blood sacrifice of an animal that was performed at the temple. But in order to provide atonement and be washed for our sins, a perfect sacrifice was coming for all of mankind. All of mankind. God's only son, Jesus. Jesus took on the sins of the world and made an atonement for them once and for all. So you see, you and I are set free from those sins. Our penance is paid by Christ Jesus on the cross. By our baptism, we are symbolically made clean. We are washed clean. But really, that's an affirmation of what Jesus has already done for you. And it's a way for us to show our acknowledgement, our acceptance of that sacrifice that he made for us. Christ Jesus gave his life for us so that we might live. And it honors that sacrifice when what we bring to the cross, we leave at the cross. So I invite you now, as we're going to come up and do a couple of songs, to go ahead and write down on your piece of paper while we're doing the songs. And then, oh, you guys had nails, great. Uh, just kind of come up solemnly and quietly and mail it to the cross fold it over no one else needs to see it it's between you and god we won't look at it go ahead and mail them the cross as we're doing our music
Sometimes see the cross in ornate gold, and and uh, and we see it as a beautiful symbol. But what we really know is that it was uh, hewn out of wood, and our Savior was nailed to it. Uh, and so now we we do a traditional song that so many of our uh, parents, grandparents goes back a ways even farther than this. So. so much that I need to give up and just surrender it all. So. <laughs> Yeah. 
Our scripture lesson starts tonight with Luke 23, 44 through 49. And if you'd like to follow along, we've got Bibles over here. And it starts out, it was about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into my hands I commit my spirit. And then when he said this, he breathed his last. 
The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. This part of our service this evening is called the Passion of Our Lord. And if you have read the story, or if you've seen like the Passion of the Christ, these verses and these lessons will come alive for you. Our first lesson is Jesus' disciples fall asleep in the Garden of Gethsemane. This comes from Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 46. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will but as you will. Then he turned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Lesson two is about Judas, and he betrays Jesus with a kiss. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd, armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged with a signal for them. The one I kiss is the man, and the rest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas says, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said, Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward and seized Jesus and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached out for his sword, drew it, and stuck the servant of the high priest, cutting his ear off. And Jesus said, Put your sword back in its place. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, I am leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you didn't arrest me. 
that this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him. Our third lesson this evening is Jesus before the Sanhedrin. Matthew 26, 57 through 68, and this is what Matthew writes. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Peter's denial. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him. You were also with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out into the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept. Our next lesson, lesson five, is Jesus before Pilate. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. 
While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with him. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you, asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered him, Crucify him! Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Lesson 6. The soldiers mock Jesus. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered a whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. Then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and then they nailed in front of him and they mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. And they spit on him. And they took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon. And they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it back in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him as well. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel? Let him come down now from the cross, and then we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now, if he wants him, for he said, I am the son of God. And in the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him.
The death of Jesus. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he is calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine, put it on the staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit.
bell has tolled 33 times, one for each year of Jesus' life. Lesson 8. Surely he was the Son of God. At that very moment, the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom. The earth shook. The rocks split. And the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those who were with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely this was the Son of Man. Let us pray. Today, dear Lord, we come before you and we commemorate your mighty acts of salvation, giving your life in surrender for us. So today we surrender our life to you. We will trust you. We will draw on the power of the Holy Spirit to go the ways that you would have us go. Let us pray this prayer in unison and in one spirit. Father, thank you that I can depend on you. Empower my life with the Holy Spirit. Trust me to help you fully, trust in you fully, and to let your spirit guide my heart. Bring your Holy Spirit to us today. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. Lord, by the light of the Holy Spirit, you have taught the hearts of your faithful in the same Spirit. Help us delight in what is right and always rejoice in your consolation. We ask this through Christ Jesus, our Lord. As the music leader I had selected, I always like to, to try to send everybody upbeat, out upbeat, so I had selected Glorious Day, but it doesn't feel appropriate. So I think we're going to close the service instead, because this Holy Friday is a very somber day. When they crucified the Savior. So I think we're just going to uh, close the service and and just pray and when you feel like uh, when you feel like you've had a chance to personally pray to your Savior you may just uh, get up and and leave for the night and we'll have a, a celebration on Easter Sunday amen